hey guys, I I got roasted. I got roasted by another podcast for my intros being too enthusiastic, too much energy. They're pretty mean about it, and they cut like ten of my intros back to back, to, back to back together, and I felt shame. Um, and I thought maybe some of you guys are new and you don't know me yet, so you don't know that I'm being silly. But they got to me. So, listener, write in. Do you like the silly high-energy opener, or do you want me to chill out every now and then? Because right now I'm chilling out, but it's more of a wet blanket vibe. But I'm glad that you're here, and I'll be okay. Don't worry. I know sometimes when I get sad, you guys get really worried. I, I'll, I'll shake this one off. I love you, Bottoms. You kind, kind Bottoms. Um, this week, one of my best friends in the world, Lucas Zelnick, is on the podcast. I know some guy. I, you probably... You, you don't tune in for the men, particularly the straight ones. But this guy, he's so special. He's really one of my best friends. He opens for me on the road. I love his comedy because he doesn't look like it, but he's truly just such an incredible ally. And I've loved having him open for me and really surprise the audience with his stuff. And I think he'll do that for you today. Uh, he's so, so funny. We get into him <laughs> dating a conservative like having a one night kind of fling with a conservative and how that went for him. And we also get into some conversation around uh, having really clear consent and how he feels about that as like a straight guy and how, you know, it's on his mind all the time and how he goes about getting it, you know? So it was a really wonderful conversation and I think one that more places need to have. And then, you know, I'm going to be, the, the tour is really huge. We just added dates in Vermont, Oklahoma City, and Springfield. We still have Phoenix. Uh, Chicago, we're going to add shows. So there's a lot of shows. Get on the text list because you don't even have to worry about this. And, of course, these episodes are primarily sponsored by the Patreon. You can donate as little as a dollar a month, and you get up to four bonus episodes a month. Crazy. Wow. All right. Patreon.com slash WHGS. Have a great week, guys. This episode is brought to you by Helix Sleep. New year, new you, listener. Go get a new mattress. Yeah, that's all I got. That's it. But I do love Helix mattresses, and right now you can get up to $350 off all mattress orders and two free pillows at helixsleep.com slash gay sex. This is their best offer yet, and it won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now. Have you ever had a contrived, well, they won't they, where a girl proactively will be like, we shouldn't. And I'll be like, shouldn't what? <laughs> <laughs> I was on a date with this girl. We were in London and we finished this date and we went down to the banks of the Thames River, like muddy banks, like very, for me, the only thing I knew about London was like the bubonic plague. So that was what it was like making me think of. She goes, we can't have sex down here. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, we're about to have sex down here. <laughs> I was like, I thought I was just seeing the river. Well, we better start. We better start with. <laughs> <laughs> it's happened again <laughs> for the third time in WHGS history. It's only the third time? I know. They really hate me when I do it. Oh, my God. We have a straight cis man oh on the podcast. Oh, my God. I do apologize for being here. Thank you. So <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for choosing to have me. And yet, I also am sorry to be here. <laughs> um, you are making history. You're in a, you're in a <laughs> this is your stone wall right now. <laughs> How's it feel? You threw the first football at Stonewall. <laughs> 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 this is me outside of Stonewall. Like these people are kind of gay, right? <laughs> um, it feels but, incredible. Yeah. I'm so glad. Oh, good, good. I feel like Lance Armstrong, but, or no, wait, no, that's, Not the, Lance that's Armstrong. the cyclist. I feel like I'm doing performance enhancing drugs so that I can make it onto a podcast. You, you feel like you've metaphorically lost a testicle by being here. <laughs> yes. That's better than what I was going to do. I was going to do gay enhancement drugs. <laughs> like you're only like a able to be. or something. <laughs> I have no idea poppers, what, it, yeah. what it be. Poppers. Yes. Yeah. There you go. Gay enhancement drugs. Um, excellent gay referencing. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. No, I've, yeah. I uh, well, researched because... several hours before. <laughs> no, I feel like Neil Armstrong, um, except for instead of walking my first step on the moon, I'm on like a big purple dildo. <laughs> Probably shouldn't have said that. And I do apologize again. 
No, we we actually do walk around on on big purple dildos. That's what happens after they they contact you to give you your gay card yeah. or your queer card. They invite you on a on a moon bounce shaped like a purple dildo. So that's why the soles of Doc Martens are so thick because they're, they're filled with strap ons and dildos. Right, right, yeah. exactly. Tiny, tiny little. That's also cancellation in the lesbian community. Is you instead of walking the plank, you have to walk on a big dildo. <laughs> Right. Again, I just keep I was going to say, let's further. stop doing the purple dildo riffs, right. but you did one more. Purple dildo Lee, I apologize. Nope, I shouldn't have said purple dildo Lee before apologizing. All right. But thank you for being here. Thank you. You are Lucas Selnick. I am. And you're my friend, and you open for me on the road, but you are a headliner. Inexplicably, yes. I inexplicably open for you on the road. No, I do think we have a similar attitude on yes. stage, which is why I love having you there. I feel like you get them ready for my tone. Mm. You get them ready to be verbally assaulted. That's true. <laughs> um, we have a similar like fan base in a weird way. Yeah, because, we And do. we do have yeah, some you, crossover because yeah. you are a headliner in your own right. You're, you're you know, big on TikTok. Just take the compliment, <sighs> you thank piece you. of shit. Yeah, yeah, thank you. When yeah. you said uh, similar in your own, like that your audiences would like to sleep with you. <laughs> <laughs> that is I not- I didn't even mean that, in, I genuinely thought- <laughs> Here's the thing. I was like, you both. We had, we're, we're just getting, we're slamming puss out there. <laughs> we're scuba diving through pussy. That's <laughs> the biggest issue with our fan base is, is it's hard. You got to come up for air sometimes. Yeah, it's, it's true. Like, you and me, we got the same joke to wet ratio. So <laughs> <laughs> the J to W is a critical way to measure your fan base. And uh, very hard to tell jokes when you're deep inside of someone. You can't fucking breathe. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like one of those hack jokes where you're like, have you heard guys do jokes about going to out on their wives and they're like, you only got the one nostril. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. you're swimming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Globe, globe, globe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I meant that they're from TikTok and they've never seen comedy before. Oh, oh. Yeah. yeah. And and legitimately sometimes they are the same people. They are sometimes the, we when do I have open some for of the you, same fans. They're yeah. like, you're that guy. They also refer to us the same way. They come out to see us and inexplicably still don't know our names. <laughs> oh you're that God, comedian from TikTok. You just paid thirty dollars to see me. My name's on a poster outside. Why don't you know it? But you're the Jew, right? Yeah. You're the Jew. I you're just that paid Jewish to see. comedian. You, I'm, I'm, I have a name tag on right now. It's like that. I yeah. was walking down the street with Jamie last night, another friend of ours who's also a, big on TikTok, and the <laughs> he, we were walking down the street, and the lady stopped and goes, "Oh, you're Jamie something from Comedy Something Something." <laughs> and he was like, yeah, he's like, so. Instagram. <laughs> I don't know if he would mind that I told that, but no, no, he wouldn't care. Every time people come up to us in any regard, it's a sobering reminder of how little bit of their mind we occupy. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Like they do not care. They're, it's more they're, they're observing that I'm there. They're not impressed. It's a weird level of fame. They never want a picture. Wow, they go, so you are there. And I'm like, I am here. I, I had such a hard hard time nailing the interaction when I first started getting recognized because I literally did not know how to process what they were asking for, yeah. which was nothing at all. Not, can I have a picture? Not, can I get to know you? Just, you are who I think you are? Question mark. And then once they said yes, they're like, great, that's sufficient. Good to see you. You're so, f you're really, really funny. You're building, you're doing your, it should, do you want me to announce your podcast? Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. You have just started a podcast with my other friend, your friend, my friend. <laughs> you started a podcast. You friend, stole my, my friend, friend to start a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jamie Wolf. Yes. You've both done Sunday School a bunch of times and we you have. guys both tour together. We do. And you can check out their podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, just Spotify and Apple Music actually, or Apple Podcast. Okay. We just haven't figured out the distribution for the smaller platform. <laughs> You're I don't doing, even it's like a soft launch right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, we're soft You're, launching. We're about to hard launch it on a purple dildo oh. into space right now oh, yeah. with, with this. <laughs> We're strapping copies of our podcast to a big purple D and shooting it up in outer space. Copies of the, there's just a bunch of USB drives I'm really strapped betraying to the strap. QR code. It's a dildo made out of QR codes. <laughs> Honestly, should I get one of those planes with my text QR code thing on it and then have it fly above New York City? Oh my God. Oh, I thought you were going to say with a dildo on it. And I was going to be like, that's funny. I don't, I mean, I don't know how it connects no to your career. No one will know you but. did it, yeah. <laughs> um, but thank you for being here. I feel like, how long have you been going? Nine minutes? Uh, eight minutes. Wow, Spidey sense. I know. You yeah, didn't even well round done. up to 10. I, I just felt like, it felt like really good. And so I was like, it's probably less than what it is. Cause if it feels really good, it's usually less time. Cause it's mm. like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm oh, flies. it's chock full of chock. Lesbians are stuff. trying so hard right now to be like, 
look, there's a straight dude on. Now they're doing math. Like, I'm going to sit through this one, but what the fuck are you doing, Ashley? Listen, guys, one of the reasons it's important to have straight people on the podcast is because they bring other straight people to the podcast. Yes. And then they're learning things and they're like, oh, I didn't think this lesbian podcast was going to be funny. But then I have men coming up to me in the street like, don't tell anyone. But I listen to your podcast. Like they don't. And I like your yeah. comedy. Yeah, and exactly. anyone can laugh at it. Exactly. Yeah. Also, so. I will say this about straight people. This is not a comment on myself, but if you've met them, many straight people are gay. <laughs> <laughs> and this is not a comment on myself. <laughs> Again, this is not about me. I just will say I've met many gay straight people in my life. Telling you guys for a friend, I am not gay, but some straight people are gay. <laughs> you may hear an announcement. Stay tuned. But in, in lieu of an announcement, I just want to let you know that. Uh, nonetheless, many straight people remain gay. <laughs> Texas is a big s state where yeah. all straight people are. No, it's true. Gay. There's a lot of closeted <laughs> listeners. And um, if you're in the closet, that's okay. Like in your own time. But also, what th this is going to sound... This is, that this also is, sounded I'm like it was to directed sound, at me. I'm about to be if you're in the closet, <laughs> Lucas, that's totally fine. We didn't Luke, bring him on here because we know anything about him or we have any kind of agenda or hopes for the episode. We but just to the lesbians <laughs> listening, stay tuned because there might be an announcement at the end. <laughs> <laughs> there, that's the clickbait for the rest of the episode. Um, your fans are rapidly unsubscribing and <laughs> following you immediately. Um, but I will say you're one of the most... Uh, you're. It's funny because... You're, you are a really good ally. I, I know that's oh, going to sound, you. maybe sounds condescending or maybe stupid. <laughs> no, it's certainly I, I not condescending. No, I only laughed that you just, I only laughed that <laughs> you were like. Does it sound gay? <laughs> <laughs> Do I sound gay right now? <laughs> Can we get a boo yes. sound effect in here? <laughs> <laughs> but you're, oh yeah. Oh, it took too Don't long. Don't do <laughs> You're a really good ally. I guess I am. <laughs> um, but you are a really good ally. You ask, you're one of the only, you're the realest ally I've ever met. Like you're very much yourself. You're kind of a bro, <laughs> but you're also like so thoughtful and ask such nice questions and you're not afraid to ask the questions and you're not afraid to sound stupid and then take like a <laughs> sorry I just spat on you I'm like you're a fucking idiot but you're not you're not a you know what I mean like you're very there's, earnest there's a lot of also like when people are trying like when I, I think for any group of people who are like I want to be an ally they get very nervous and tense and weird and it's like just be yourself yes, like that's exactly. not a sustainable way to be a person right exactly yeah. and I think that applies to any kind of allyship that you're doing if yeah. you're deeply if you're just you know, posting the black square and then walking away and not doing any, you know what I mean? Like you want to, you want to challenge yourself. And mm. I feel like you do that. Yeah. It's weird because honestly, like my entire life, my friend groups were exactly who you would think it was well off straight white guys who played sports literally until I became a comedian. And then I realized that we all connected over something that was like unrelated to our identities. And I was like, I've always gone really deep in my friendships, but you know, it's been easy to go deep because I know everything about them already. <laughs> I'm like, like deep is like, okay, so we're the same person, but you like asses and I like tits, you know? So, <laughs> so let's and figure that, that honestly, out. Honestly, that element of friendship is still here. Yeah. Oh yeah. A hundred, well, that's critical to any friendship. You got to know. We, we've never talked about that. Oh, you don't. I actually am not like a big, I, I, in terms of body types and I do try to avoid body type discussion on the podcast because yeah, I, right. want, that could be harmful. I want yeah. no, no no I want everyone to know that like my opinions don't matter you know what I'm mm. saying like yeah. mine yeah, do but <laughs> yours don't continue <laughs> like you, you yeah they don't call it the female gaze honey <laughs> <laughs> but I just want them to know nobody like, cares <laughs> first of all I don't have like a strong I don't have like a strong I would say if you looked at all of the, I hate to phrase it this way, but if you were to look at all the bodies of the people that I've dated. <laughs> the scatter plot, if you Just will. in a pile, kind of, yeah. <laughs> we're back to math references, unfortunately. We knew no, we'd get it's back actually, here. Actually, rather than a pile of dead bodies, <laughs> let's go If you were to look at the, the measurements on the wall in my room that I keep meticulously. <laughs> the, it's the spreadsheet that I have and update daily. <laughs> it's a scatter plot, but when it comes to lesbians, I prefer to use a box and whiskers plot. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, Sorry. you're the you're a straight I, cis man. Yeah, thank if you. you say sound effect, you get a sound effect. You're producing the podcast. Alex, get out of here. There can only be one. I'm here to gentrify this space as I've done with every other in my life. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I feel like they're they're very different. The the my concrete type is just like kind of femme and 
sort of passionate about her career. That's like mm. what I would say is my concrete type. Wow, you're a really good person. I was like, are you an ass or tits guy? And you're like, I kind of like someone who's passionate about their career. <laughs> like, <laughs> ambition? Yeah, that's, that's, ambition is my tits. <laughs> <laughs> my ass, drive. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, tits and ass riff heightened. <laughs> but the if I had to, if you had to reduce me, if you had to, re ah, it's so hard. Am I making you be what, a bad person? I'm what sorry. year is it? You know, it, it ebbs and flows. Sometimes you have an ass year. Listener, write in. Are you having an ass or a tits year? <laughs> or a peen year? Or a bussy year? Write mm. in. Let us know what kind of, or maybe just an asexual year or life. Yeah, are you having like know. calves or big toe, you yeah, know? Give us yeah. Big any body part, doesn't have to be sexual. Part. <laughs> and for me, it's been tits forever. Just to, be, <laughs> just to be totally candid. <laughs> I'm just not gonna lie about that, yeah. I would say I'm not having a particular thing right now, but I've definitely had ass years and I've definitely had tits moments. Mm. But if you were to look over the- <laughs> Ass years and then tits flashed in the pan at times. <laughs> Okay, the listeners are like, you had a straight guy on for two minutes. <laughs> we're already on to asses and we're and already tits. on to asses and tits. Oh my God, I really am gentrifying the pod, huh? <laughs> no, no, no. And, I, and you have such great stories and you have, I mean, like, I think one of the, re you just, I, I just love you and I love your stuff and your stuff is so smart and I'm really, really glad you're here and I'm stalling because I, I don't have a story prepared for this week. It's Did the you classic. not have sex? No, I, I had sex. <laughs> Sorry, that's funny just knowing what you because you, you the, always have sex. I was, I was gonna be so excited if she didn't have sex. <laughs> no, I, I had sex. Wow. It's not as much as it used to be. I used to be, you know. But that's more of a commentary on how unhealthy it used to be, not how <laughs> irregular it is now. <laughs> I'm tired. I travel a lot. But I used to be legitimately unwell and now I'm fucking a ton of p that's what, that's what it sounds like to me. <laughs> um, but I, uh, oh yeah, we didn't do our thing. Nah, okay. Hi, hello, hi listener. Thank you for listening. We're doing live stream events now all the time. And then ashleygavin.com for tour dates. Follow Maddie, you little piece of shit. Maddie to 20K, <laughs> Maddie T. Wiener on Instagram. I am a cis gay white woman. She, her pronouns. I'm doing the special. Fund the special, patreon.com slash WHGS, as little as a dollar. Did I do everything? I think so. What's your favorite? Uh, oh, you majored in English. Uh, and economics, if that helps. Although oh. I get the sense it doesn't for whatever the question e is going to be. Economics. I do a thing. Well, because Maddie, and as always, the, the whole monitor to keep me from getting canceled. Don't even bring up home economics <laughs> unless that's what you're into. I don't know. I'm trying to do home a, economics. Like, Very just, different from like, like, economics. I know, was? but that's just, it just reminded me. He does me. outside economics. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was just trying to cut. I'm a man. A, they wouldn't let us. I just, wait, is that economics. why they called it that? For, like, no, I, yeah, I go trade on the stock market, but you do like home economics. That's what they called it. Oh, yeah. 100%. That's so funny. Yeah. Yeah. And they tried to bring in like budgeting and things like that to make it feel more. You know, that's there was, fucking there hilarious. Was a point that's where, evil. Well, the point of this so was I do a riff to bring in Maddie as my my cancel hall monitor. Yeah. Uh, it failed. The riff, <laughs> the, the riff Sorry, fully the riff. crashed and burned. It fell out burned. of the sky like a purple dildo that had been <laughs> unsuccessfully launched into space. <laughs> Maddie Wiener. <laughs> Hello, I'm Maddie Wiener. Uh, she, they pronouns. Uh, I also do comedy. I'm on Instagram, Maddie T. Wiener. Everything's in my link tree. Is there anything else about me as a person? <laughs> We've been doing the riff on and off, whether or not you want to justify why you're still a virgin. Oh yeah. But, but, I still want to clarify, gay virgin. Yes. I've had sex. <laughs> yes. <I'm> <laughs> and we've been talking and now I feel bad about the riff because you clarified to me that the, the queerness in you might be more gender based than do, sexuality based. I do feel that. I mean, I'm very attracted to w women and femme queer people. That's like, I just look, scared don't get me them. wrong. I love boobs. Yeah, but I, <laughs> I mean, here's the thing that people don't understand. Back, baby. <laughs> it's like, oh, <laughs> Maddie's not sleeping with that many women. Maddie's not sleeping with a lot of guys either. It's just, it's the sex overall. The ratio's not off. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I do feel more, yeah, I feel like my, my, um, my connection to queerness is, is much more, 
through gender, that's like a much more personal part of my queerness to me. Yeah. So well, I could, okay, we Should can brainstorm. Should we be even tracking your gay virginity or is it wrong of me to do that? I don't know that it's wrong of you. I just don't think it's going to get very interesting. <laughs> I <laughs> have hope. Soon. I have hope. Okay. Well, I'll let you know if it does. Okay. We could do it, but I could tell you the most like yeah, non-binary ex- I th- thing I did of the week. Yes. Yes. Mm. Tell me your, your gender. Kiosk oh of the gosh. week. Your kiosk, kiosk of, of the week. week. <laughs> if you don't, if you don't follow me super closely, kiosk is my favorite <laughs> non-binary name. Um, What's your kiosk of the week? Oh man, I actually, I should have thought of that before I said anything. <laughs> <laughs> you offered without anything in the tank. This would be so good if I had it. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Think about it. Okay, I'll think yeah, about it. I'll come back, back to you. It. Yeah, what are you selling at the kiosk? <laughs> <laughs> what am I selling at the kiosk? <laughs> Let's go, baby. <laughs> um, and Lucas, what we have people do is ex- uh, tell them what pe- their pronouns and their gender identity and their sexuality, anything that people- What are pronouns? <laughs> <laughs> Lucas is gonna look directly into the camera and be like, guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I challenge you, motherfucker. <laughs> One eye closing. What do you think my pronouns are? <laughs> um, I'm Luke Zelnick. Uh, I'm a straight white man with pronouns he, him. And again, I do apologize for that. <laughs> you identify as sorry for uh, this episode. Yes, yes. <laughs> Listener, are you listening to our Patreon exclusive, You're Having Gay Sex? Well, here's a sneak peek of what you missed last week. We spent the next four days in equal parts exploring Budapest and having sex. We did it in the changing room at a thermal bath. What? And the bathroom had a ruin bar on the deck of a dinner cruise. And before we'd leave for dinner and after we'd get back for the night. that is the one I need to... (laughs) Unpack because the rest of them have like sort of an enclosure. I know decks. <laughs> I was Carnival Cruise Lines first opening day performer, and that is difficult. <laughs> there are four bonus episodes a month of this series. You're having gay sex on our Patreon at the ten dollar tier, and then two at the five dollar tier. patreoncom slash whgs. Well, thanks for being here. I guess this is more of a sincere story because, oh my god, so that girl, so. Did I do this on the episode with you? Do you know how I met this woman? Wait, the one? woman that I brought to your show. Yeah, she was like on a live, st- or no, she had slid into your DMs, Wait, right? I yes. think I met this woman that night, didn't I? Oh yeah, you a while met ago? Okay, I did meet so her, fun. yeah, yeah, yeah. So but I don't think I know the story. Stunning, Yeah, so gorgeous. beautiful. Oh yeah. It's so cool, she's a songwriter. She's like a su- very successful songwriter. Yeah, and she has so much similar family trauma to me that she's like really worked hard to work through. Mm. And I, as someone who's like worked really hard on my own shit, I was like, at first when I heard the family trauma, because I've worked on myself so much, I was like, "Uh oh, you know, like, like that's like, I have dated people with really nice family lives since, and it's been super peaceful. So like, that's sort of something I'm attracted to now. But then when I heard her talk about it, I was like, oh, that's kind of incredible that she actually seems to have done quote unquote the work, Mm. you know what I mean? And in a way that was sort of of cool that we had that in common, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) I actually heard a really interesting quote about two people dating when they have the same trauma. It's like, but it doesn't sound good, but it's like two (laughs) garbage trucks crashing in the middle of the night exploding and then the garbage people getting out and trying to sort out whose trash is whose. Oh my my God. My last relationship before I dated, um, my ex Jen was like that. Mm-hmm. It was like, and we were so drawn to each other because we had so much in common, yeah. mm. but we had neither one of us had sorted through our yeah. shit. And so it was, it was a garbage fire. It was yeah. a literal garbage fire. That's such a great analogy. Um, but this woman, it seemed really different, but then we had like, we were talking about things and we, I don't want to get too personal, but we were like fundamentally incompatible in this one very important way. Mm. And so we were both sort of like, I don't know what to do because I really like you. And, you know, I took her, Maddie, do you know about the date yet? What's the date? Well, I know what your- your, My move. Your move. Yeah, you sort of have a methodology, kind of like a serial killer would, where (laughs) you sort of, we see this pattern of the same types of women and the same places and the same rituals. Yeah. The differences on the police lineup, they couldn't be like brown hair, five foot two. They'd be like 
amazing work-life balance. <laughs> I just feel like a court stenographer who's like premeditation check. <laughs> but I we did the sushi and the ice cream mm. and the you know the pier and the whole thing. The date. We went on the date platonically. We went on the as date as a platonic. team. Alex has been on the date. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice date. It's a nice date. And then of course there was like so much chemistry. Ugh. What, what? We had sex. What, what was the, ugh? The (laughs) sex, I shouldn't have had sex with her. We were both like, we shouldn't do this. And then we will, they won't, they'd for like so long. We were just like making out being like, we shouldn't do more than this. But that's so hot. (laughs) (laughs) Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. Oh my God, no. Oh, (laughs) this is bad. We're being so bad right now. (laughs) We're flirting with danger. <laughs> Wait, why were you not supposed to? Why? Because we, we were both like, we're going to develop feelings and this the oxytocin is going to get released into our brains. Mm. You know, the oxytocin. Right, right. It's always an oxytocin risk. Yeah. <laughs> you ri- When you both orgasm, you risk the- Oh, it's you, you're, yeah. yeah, you're putting together into a little love blender. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So transmitters. we did it. And then like, then we had to have another conversation where it was like, well, what do we do? And I was of, I was like, well, I've dated casually for a really long time. So I feel very comfortable dating casually. But she was like, I do not feel comfortable dating casually. Mm. And I had to be in respect of her feelings and stuff like that. I had to be like, well, fine. You know, like I can't, you can't, you can't chase after her someone who says that to you, you just can't do it. And, and to be as someone who's on the side of like, like I, I don't, dating casually is not really something I've ever done. And it's not something I think I'd be really, really? good at. Really? That's yeah, so I've had one night stands or I've had like relationships, but I've never like been seeing someone while they're sleeping with other people. And I think if that person is For like- For some people it's really not. It's yeah. really hard. It also makes me anxious STD wise. I know there's ways to be safe, but I'm oh, just like- Oh, for sure, for sure. It like- I have rules around that for myself. And I think also it's always been with men and I'm like- I, it, And they are more dangerous STD wise. Well, I also just- Well, on all categories, men are more dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to limit it to STDs. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but but, but I understand from that point of where you're like, oh, I can't push it with this person because then if they- get into me, they're going to be wanting a relationship. It's, I don't know. I, I just, I, I relate a lot to her feelings. perspective. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Still, I think that's the right thing to do is to be like, yeah, well then, then we got to cut ties. Cause I don't want to hurt you yeah, by stringing exactly. you along so hard. in a way that you can't do it's it. It's just really, really hard. And I still have her earrings and she has my t-shirt. So God. I got to go, I got to make a plan. Are your ears birthday pierced? This week. No, no, no. I have her earrings, but are you, but your ears aren't pierced. No. Whoa. Were they ever pierced? No. Sorry, you were saying something so no, deep no, no, and I went is... straight to, I just have never no, asked I this. think this is more important. I think my straightness is wiping off on Maddie today. <laughs> oh my, oh my God. God, are your ears pierced? <laughs> Wait, Riff you jinx. would look so cute. Yeah, Riff Jinx, you owe me a Riff Soda. <laughs> riff Soda, it's just comedian sweat. <laughs> Carbonated comedian sweat. Oh. <laughs> Ew. Sorry, that's the first thing that bumped it, jumped into my no, head. No, that's funny. Yeah, that's funny. What else would Riff Soda be? Oh God, I was thinking of the sound when you crack the cap. It would be like heightened. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking just straight alcohol. <laughs> you, you lift the cap and it's like, we're having fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're having fun. <laughs> My friend, two comedian friends of mine got matching we're having fun tattoos. <laughs> are you serious? Isn't that fucking great? I hope that they're good. Really yeah. I hope they're good at comedy. Oh, true. <laughs> they are, they're great. Okay, <laughs> good, good, good. Um, but I was, I have her earrings and it's her birthday this week. She asked me, she was like, you can come any day to drop off the earrings, but don't come on my birthday. And I was like, okay, I won't. I know it's such a bummer. We're so nice together. But you just can't like her. Yeah. I just think because of the circumstances of our lives, it's just like, I would have to be like actively falling in love to want to try and pursue. Yeah. 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 That's where I would. Her or anybody. Her, for this situation. Yeah. yeah. But you, yeah. You, do you mean you have to be falling in love to do a monogamous relationship? Or you're just saying no, the no, way no, things no. are right With now. The way to, things are because yeah, yeah. of the incompatibility issues. Mm. Like I would have to be like, this is worth sorting out this level of shit. Yeah. yeah. And it's yeah, just- Yeah, someone where you're like, oh, we've been dating for two months, but for some reason I want to go to couples therapy with you to make this work. <laughs> right, it's like, right, okay, right. I can't do that. <laughs> exactly. But and I know that feeling. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So that's, that's my gay sex from this week. I have her earrings in my- in my drawer and she has my Milwaukee improv shirt. 
Oh, so that's a good shirt. It's yeah. a great shirt. Oh, it's gonna man. be like Portrait of a Lady on Fire. Fifty years from now, you open the earrings and you're like, la vida, no. <laughs> Sports. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, that's my gay sex from this week. Incredible. Listener, you know I love a Helix mattress. I've been sleeping on one for a few years now, and it's the best sleep ever. And you know why? Because they make a customized mattress for me. We're all we're all our own little unique little snowflakes, right? Maybe you're a bifem bratty bottom, or you're a stone top. Well, no matter what you're fucking on, <laughs> Helix has something for you, and you can go and take their quick quiz and get matched with the perfect mattress. It takes under two minutes, that quiz, and it really knows. Take it from me, I'm having the best sleep of my life. Helix is a premium mattress brand that provides tailor mattresses based on your unique sleep preferences. The Helix lineup includes 14 unique mattresses, including a collection of luxury models and a mattress for big and tall folks, and even a mattress made just for kids. And your personalized mattress is shipped straight to your door free of charge. Buying a mattress, that's a big deal. You might want to test it out. Well, you get 100 nights of a risk-free trial with Helix. See how your body adjusts. And then if you decide it's not the best fit, you're welcome to return it for a full refund. But I assure you, you're going to like it. Not only is the mattress the best I've ever slept on, but the setup was fast and easy. And Helix mattresses are delivered in a box straight to your door for free. Plus, you got that 10 or 15-year warranty, depending on the model. So you can rest easy, A-O, A-O, on a Helix mattress. Helix is offering up to $350 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash gay sex. This is their best offer yet, and it won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now. Lucas, did you have gay sex this week? I didn't. Well, does this count? No, right? Yeah, I think this counts. Oh, this podcast? Right now, yeah. Yes, I suppose. We're having gay sex. We are having literally. gay sex we are with having gay Lucas sex. Yeah. Zelnick. Yeah. So yeah. technically. Great. Yes. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Um, but you I know you we we talked. Yeah. We did talk about what this was and how you'd approach it. Yeah. So I know you have a couple things that you might want to discuss. Yeah. Well, I will say one thing that this made me think of, but this is more of a sex story. I want to talk about how I'm not sexually forward, maybe. Maybe that's a good thing for us. We can all talk to- about I think we'll be able to talk about both. Okay. Well, because then I think me- that's one of the most interesting things about you yeah. as a just a guy. Yeah. Because you are the archetype of everything our listener hates. <laughs> but you're not that guy. And you have some interesting perspective on that. Yeah, I guess I'm not quite that guy. Not even for lack of wanting to be. I, I might prefer to be that guy. It would have been easier for, <laughs> at least it would have served me for a lot of my life. Maybe yeah. not now. Yeah. But I just never was. But I will say the thing that you said about the will they, won't they, sex being hot I had a similar situation, I, <laughs> but it was the most bizarre will they, won't they? Have you ever had a contrived will they, won't they, where a girl proactively will be like, we shouldn't. And I'll be like, shouldn't what? So this, have, I'll, 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 I'll explain what I mean. I was, think of when someone's like, don't think about purple elephants. And you're like, that's not, now that's all I'm thinking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So literally I went, I was on a date with this girl who ended up, denying the Holocaust. She started denying <laughs> oh the Holocaust. Although you are Jewish, we should mention that. I yes, am Jewish, yes, yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, I wasn't like, I agree. I mean, <laughs> who's really counting? No, I was like- As am I, we have a rare majority in this room. Oh. <laughs> Wait, we're all Jewish. Well, I whether or not I am is up for debate. Okay. Again, I have, and I have it remains beholder. to be your wavering on the topic that means you're not. I feel, I feel like half Jewish is how I would express myself. Oh my God, yeah. you're Jewish the way I'm queer. <laughs> <laughs> I think so technically by the rules of the community. I feel like I am, but I feel like if I was in a room with everyone, maybe I'm not in the room. What's your, what's, what's your Jewish virginity story? Do you have to have a bat mitzvah? We might have to bat mitzvah you. Oh my God. I should oh have a bat mitzvah you. Oh, that would be so fun. That would be I never had a bat mitzvah either. We should both do it together. Oh, you guys oh should do God. a joint bat mitzvah. It's usually called a b'nai mitzvah. 
It really? Yeah. Oh my god. Do you know yeah. B'nai mitz- mit- B'nai what does that mean? mitzvah? I think is just two mitzvahs at the same time, but typically I think it's twins where one's a boy and one's a girl. Two mitzvahs, one Torah. Two, one. Wait, so it's gender neutral? I had a two girls, one <gasps> cup rip. R- it could. This could actually become your kiosk of the week as well. <laughs> we could hit two birds with one stone and with one simple b'nai mitzvah. All we have to do is rent an event space, get a synagogue on board, memorize a Torah portion, and have a speech with a procession with all your loved ones. And you yeah, know, let's go to you, a synagogue and be like, "Hey, can we film this for a gay sex podcast?" I was gonna say, you know, we're live streaming it and selling tickets. Oh, it's this will. There's Our no live way this, at the Bell House. Ben, yeah. ben, Ben, Central Synagogue. I'm there on Thursday, December 21st. Friday, December 22nd. <laughs> we have an early and a late show. VIP tickets are going fast. Those are the tickets nearest to the Torah. <laughs> um, wait, what's it called again? Bet. B'nai mitzvah. B'nai mitzvah. We gotta look into Some this. of the Jewish listeners will have to correct me as to whether it's supposed. I think gender identities are old school now. Actually, I don't know. I'll ask you guys. But what I do <laughs> think is typically it was like a boy and a girl. But what I'm saying is now it would be like a female identifying person and a male identifying person, or it's just two people at the same time. I don't know which it is. Okay. For, right for the in, definition. listener. Explain what a B'nai mitzvah is if yeah. you know what it is. Yeah, right in. But I love that there's an option for uh, some uh, non binary 13 year old kids. Who, oh, yeah. And there are going to be plenty. They're going to have to change the mitzvah terms because bar and bot are very gender, gender binary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going to have to, that's a whole different, maybe yeah. it'll just be called a mitzvah, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, that would make. But mitzvahs have another meaning in Judaism. This isn't what the podcast should good, be about. Good but, deeds. <laughs> yeah. Good deeds. Um, but anyway, I was on a date with a Holocaust. <laughs> <laughs> And I can tell the story of how she denied the Holocaust and how I responded since now it feels like I, we're kind of begging the question. But the thing that I was thinking of when you were telling your story is we were in London and we finished this date and we went down to the banks of the Thames River. Okay. And when, when we got down there, she was like, we What are you sh- doing in London? Just being rich? Um, <laughs> I'm not rich. <laughs> no, no, I am. I am. Um, <laughs> uh, I was, I was actually laid over for a day. I was on a family vacation and then my flight got canceled. They rerouted me to London. I was there for one night and I, I went to go meet this girl who. Way to capitalize on your one wow. night. I knew I one girl it. in London and I was like, she's going to show me the city for one night and I'm not going to sleep much, but it'll be a good story. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. it was. Um, we got down to the banks of the Thames River. And when we got down there, like muddy banks, like very, for me, the only thing I knew about London was like the bubonic plague. So that was what it was like making me think of. She goes, we can't have sex down here. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, we're about to have sex down here. <laughs> but it hadn't occurred to me before. Right, I was like, I like, thought I was just seeing the river. Right, you, 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 you're you like, I didn't even ask. You were like, should we go down to that very, very private <laughs> of this Dirty, dirty river. Dirty river that <laughs> connotes black death for me. <laughs> and then she was like, now that we're down here, what are we going to do? <laughs> I was like, I don't know, not get infected? <laughs> I'd prefer uh, not to get gangrene in my dick. <laughs> but we did, yeah. We had sex on the banks of the <gasps> Thames River. And then- Well, but, but eventually she must have indicated to you that she had changed her mind. Oh, yeah. Well, here's what I will say about having sex with Republican women is earlier in the night, she made a whole stink. Consent is so blown out of the water and no one should even have to give consent. And they shouldn't. She also apologized for Harvey Weinstein. She did a lot of- Jesus dis- Christ. Yeah, I was like, that's not even, he's in prison for 22 years. I was like, that's not like a, uh, situation. Yeah. She went in and as to why I stayed on the date, I do apologize to the listeners. <laughs> um, I know you're wondering why I stayed. And uh, sometimes you have, you, sometimes you're attracted to people that you don't particularly agree with. It yeah. happens, you know? That I was a little attracted. And also at the end of the day, I'm a comedian. I was like, I'm not, wa- <laughs> I was like, I'm not walking away from a fucking pot of gold. Am I crazy? <laughs> why would I walk away from this date? And it's funny to me because you have a lot, of, you have a great joke about, uh, just being so concerned about consent. Yeah. So I imagine when you're hearing her say this, it's not comforting to you as a guy because you want clear messaging. Yes. I try and have active communication, but I got to say in this case, I was like, if I'm going like, I have like a normal level of communication and then like communication max, where I'm like, I'm on a date with a very liberal person who I don't know very well. 
and they're not being very sexual forward, then I'm like, is this okay? Is this okay? Is this okay? In this case, she was like, we're not fucking on the banks of the Thames. <laughs> oh, fuck it. Yes, we are. <laughs> and I was like, all right, I think I'm getting the message pretty clearly here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, but she did deny the Holocaust. <laughs> <laughs> when did that come up? Um, it happened. She started referencing Jordan Peterson. Oh, Jesus. And I was like, no, please don't make me. And she was like, he's really smart. And I was like, then you're really dumb. But <laughs> that, but we started talking about it. And sh the thing that she said, and I have a bit about this now, is she, she wasn't like saying it didn't happen, <laughs> but she was saying that if I were in that position, anyone would have done it, including me. She was like, you would have been a German soldier. And I was like, no, I would have been a Jew though. <laughs> so that's, that's the place I would have had in that. I was like, I still, even if it were a time machine, I still would have been a Jew back then. Yeah. yeah I mean, and what's the, even the point of the, there are so many different things that you can say that about. It's also, I just oh, want to I zoom know. out. We are on a date where she's seeing you for one night. Oh, and I she's know. saying all that. You're not like, I knew this person for 20 years and over the course of like right. seeing her we repeatedly, I surmise that these were her political questions views. questions about, you know, like a, a pot of boiling water, slowly boiling. You put the frog, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yes. so wasn't it was like, like that. You were like, hey, I have one night. Do you want to go walk around on the sidewalk? And she was like, so actually the numbers are in. It's like, what? <laughs> I, I got to really say. It really is a horrible first date to be like, I don't believe in consent. Oh. And then like. I'm not going to lie. We covered a lot of other topics. <laughs> I, we barely squeezed in the Holocaust. Did you push back on her at all? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I pushed back. I pushed back on everything. Um, the, the, the interesting thing about arguing with conservatives is that because they're the party of you're so offended and we don't get offended by anything, you have to remind them of that as an argument as to why they should humor your point of view. And it's so satisfying yeah. too. And you're like, oh, I thought nothing bothered, bothered you, you yeah, fucking exactly. idiot. Yeah. Like, yeah. So I was like, uh, what? My perspective is offending you now? That's interesting. Yeah. So right. she right. actually, to her credit, like heard the other side, but she fell on the wrong side on every issue. It was almost like she was, it was almost like a game for her. Like she almost I knew hate that type of. I person. do think conservatives, a, a lot of conservatives, like being. Oh, sorry, sorry. Do you yes. not like that I'm like that? And I'm like that probably drives people to be shocking for the sake of being shocking. Kind of. It's oh yeah. So weird because the the whole thing is that we rub it in their faces, but I've never seen gay people like gay people just like and trans people just try to exist, whereas like conservative people like poke me all the time, like yeah. out of nowhere. Yeah. You, they'll, and like, it's dangerous for us to poke back. Like that's why we're not doing it. You know what right, I mean? It's exactly. Like, yeah. like my, yeah. well, you know, one of my fucking aunts, like I, last time I went down there, we're just hanging out and she's like, let's talk about Hillary Clinton. And I was like, <laughs> why, why, yeah. why? Please, we're not gonna, and I literally was like, I just don't wanna talk about yeah. this with you. We're never gonna agree. And the fact that you even think that you could change my mind is so insulting. Oh, I know. It's yeah. so insulting, <laughs> but you can't say like, come on, Aunt Bonnie, you're a fucking idiot. You can't say <laughs> that to your Aunt Bonnie. Yeah. <clears throat> but anyway, continue. No, so yeah, so we ended up, She, we, we did, we talked about abortion. She said, and this was one of the, biggest moments that my job, my jaw was sliding across the floor for the entire <laughs> date. By the end of it, I had to clean dirt off of my chin because everywhere I walked, my jaw was walking in front of me. Like, like, like I was like a butler from Batman with a cane, except for it was my jaw just bouncing on each step. Uh, I was floored the entire time. But one of the most flooring moments was she said, um, she wasn't on birth control. I could finish inside of her. She was pro-life, but she believed that she personally should have the choice to have an abortion. And I was like, first of all, that Jeez. means you're pro-choice. <laughs> <laughs> pro-choice is just whether you believe you should have the choice. It doesn't believe what you believe about everything else. Right. So I was like, as soon as you believe you should have the choice, you're actually pro-choice. Yeah, yeah. Just like, I'm not pro-abortion. I'm not one of these people that believes that everybody has to get an abortion every single Friday. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. That's not what the argument is. <laughs> what are they, it's just remarkable to me because you hear that all the time. Oh, I know. You hear the New York Times like covering stories about people who are protesting outside mm -hmm. of Planned Parenthood, use that Planned Parenthood's abortion services yeah. and then go back to protest. Because they fundamentally lack empathy. They're like, no, no, I'm a person in a hard situation and I right, need this. Right, All right. those other people who do it are evil, They're sinning doing it for people. Fun, yeah. It's like you genuinely can't 
put yourself in somebody else's shoes and see that they are just as much of a human being as you. Right. Like it, it's, it's, so I'm not being funny, but it's like no, no, really no. insane no, you're, you're, how much it's like, oh, yeah. yeah, just lacking basic human empathy. I mean, it's imagine an having, identity issue too. Yeah. Because it feels like you're a part of this belief system, but then when you actually need the thing that takes you out of the belief system, mm. it's like a form of denial almost. Yeah. Well, and imagine thinking everything we're talking about right now while having sex with her. <laughs> <laughs> Because that's what I did. <laughs> I was going completely, 100%. She doesn't even understand the definition of empathy when it comes to body positivity. And she, <laughs> when it comes to women's right to choose, she does not get it. <laughs> Instead of thinking about baseball, you're just trying to think of Bernie Sanders to not come. <laughs> oh my God. The legislation will prove me right ultimately. Maybe not in the short term, but eventually. <laughs> Um, oh wow! No one's ever humped the couch before. Yeah, that was we get a big act out from me on an, on an auditory out. medium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we have the YouTube, yeah. and uh, people will be offended. <laughs> <laughs> and I do apologize again. We do, we do apologize that Lucas is here out I, here banging Holocaust deniers, <laughs> and I was like, "Come on the show!" <laughs> and I love it because sometimes you sleep with people. I mean, it is like it is like a funny thing that like we've all hooked up with people, well, maybe not you, but we've, <laughs> I'm, I'm messing Ever. around. Continue. <laughs> but we've all hooked up with people where you like learn something about them and you're like, oh, like what do I do with this piece of information? Mm. You know what I mean? And most of the time you just walk away. You don't, you never address it, you know? Yeah. I don't know. It's just an interesting. No, totally. Yeah. I think there's like a, a, not to bring it back to math, but there is a math equation where it's like hotness and attraction versus despicable shit they say. <laughs> and you've got to like tally them all up. And I was at like, just like, if it's a scale of negative 100 to 100, I was at like 0.02. It just <laughs> pushed me over the limit of like a go, no But go I feel decision. like when you're a comedian, there's then that third element oh, of like, yeah. okay, it's reached a level of, like despicable, horrible shit that now becomes funny yes. if I like go on a date with this person. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not, I think the one thing people lose when I make the joke where I'm kind of joking about it is like, it does suck to be a Jew and hear someone say something anti-Semitic, obviously. So I did put up with that. Like it wasn't great for me mm. at all times during the day. Like I had to humor that. This is probably a complexity that the joke doesn't capture because maybe I'm not a good enough comic yet, to be honest, but it did kind of suck at times. So it was like, it was weird. It was complex. Just to flip it, if you're a woman and you're dating men, that is a cis woman dating cis men. That's a real concern that you are going to date someone who fundamentally does not agree with, you know, your- Or doesn't respect deep, you. Doesn't respect, I mean, the misogyny yeah. of like, yeah, you're kind of like put in this position of like, of- those things are being, are so intertwined. Like when you go on dating apps, like the amount of like sexual interest, but then also like genuine, like disrespect and kind of like hateful yeah. things that people say. You're Sometimes. like, oh, those are so, they're wed. Like, a, you know, it's like a welder took those and put them yeah. together. Like you don't know. I wonder what that does, Tar. I, I'll, I'll lump myself sort of in that group in the, I have part of that Venn diagram yeah. of like that, I, I don't know. I wonder what that does to your head to think like, oh, that's what sex is. That's what love is. And mm. now there are mm. great guys out there that you don't experience that with, but just like culturally those yes. are so together. I actually think that's one of the nicest things about being gay. Women have to like straight women have to navigate, no offense or anything, but they have to navigate. I don't even know what you're referring to yet. <laughs> you said it at the <laughs> but beginning they have of to, the comment. They have to navigate when you're queer. It's almost certain you're going to align on major political, moral, ethical values oh, yeah. almost mm. across the oh, board. Oh, I know what you're saying. Yeah, Like really big ones. And yeah. you're never going to have to weed people out or go on a few dates to figure it out. You just kind of can have faith that you have similar values. Mm. You know what I mean? I, and that's like one of the nicest things about queer dating. And I think the other thing straight people, you know, we never talk about the straight disadvantages <laughs> of, of dating. <laughs> But Glad the, I could be the mouthpiece for that discussion. <laughs> but you guys also, oh fuck, what, what was I gonna say? Oh, when you go on a gay date, what's one of the first things you talk about? When did you come out? How'd it go? Mm. You're already had a baseline. We have this core thing in common. And 
How did it go for you? What is your relationship like with your parents? Who are the allies in your life? Yada, yada, yada. You like learn a ton about that person from that question. Whereas you guys are like, what's your favorite color? Like I, <laughs> I, I watch Love Island. They ask each other that. And I'm like, what the fuck That's is wrong so, with these no, idiots? Uh, really what a straight date is in my opinion is it's a woman in an inherently dangerous situation <laughs> yeah. and a man trying to convince her the situation isn't dangerous <laughs> through not those words. That is what a straight date is for me. The yeah. first 15 minutes of a straight date. Well, I don't know why I'm saying straight dates because <laughs> those are the dates I go on. The first 15 minutes of a date are me. But there might be an announcement coming soon later. In the <laughs> yeah. Do the stay tuned for the rest of the podcast. <laughs> the other types of dates that Lucas may or may not be going on. <laughs> um, uh, the, the first 15 minutes are me not in these words saying, I'm not a threat. I'm not a threat. I'm not a threat. I'm not a threat. <laughs> that's what I do on a date. It sounds like you're in this context. It sounds like you might be a threat, but I know. you. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you said it like that, I would run for the hills but <laughs> while smiling. I'm not a threat. <laughs> there are certain things that like I'll do if I'm on a date with a man or if I'm like hooking up with a man where I'll, I'll ask for certain boundaries that I don't even necessarily need the boundary. I'd be fine if we didn't do it. You should but I just sure need to know that. To, yeah, I yeah. need to know that totally. if I ask for this, he'll do it and not be like, oh, fine, or not yeah. make me feel pressured. And then if they do it, then I'm like, actually, JK, you don't have to do it. But it's yeah. like, right. it's like a test to make sure you're safe. Yes. Yeah. yeah, totally. And I think men need to be, you're certainly aware of it. We've talked about it so many times. We've talked about the stuff that I can get away yeah. with that, well, not even just I, but me and the person that I'm dating that we feel so comfortable with each other because it's two women. Mm. Um, whereas with straight people, it oh, just yeah. like wouldn't fly. Yeah. Well, that's what's interesting about the road now is I'm like, I don't think I want to ever hook up with anyone on the road. And I don't do that. Yeah. And, and Ashley doesn't <laughs> either. So I don't even know what the point is necessarily. Right. I don't there's, know what we're talking no about. There's no point to make. Let's yeah. just move on. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. That was a lot of vulnerability. I, I really appreciate it. Thank you. And I'm glad you didn't get any illnesses from fucking on the, the, the banks <laughs> the of, the, river. of the river. <laughs> I'm glad that you think I didn't get any illnesses from <laughs> fucking on the I'm glad you've recovered. <laughs> um, Modern medicine is a real marvel. <laughs> Listener, one of the best ways to support this podcast is to come see me live, okay? It, it's a really great way to just support the whole team and everything that we do here. So get on my text list or my email list. It's international, both of them. AshleyGavin.com, go sign up, and I'll literally text you when I'm in your area. So you don't have to hear all these plugs. You can skip right by them. Don't even worry about your city. Just get on one of those two things, and I will let you know, okay, because there's a lot of cities coming, and i just remaking this announcement over and over again. We all think it's annoying. You do. I do. Get on the text list, you piece of shit. Uh, Maddie, did you have gay sex this week? I did not, but I have, I had a little trip to the kiosk, which I don't even know what I call a trip to the kiosk, but I, this was last night. I stayed up all night. Um, Are you okay? <laughs> no, I, and then I slept as soon as the sun came up <laughs> and then I came straight here. So, but I was like, I'm going to clean my room and I have like really bad, I don't know if it's like ADHD procrastination, but if there's a task that could take me 20 minutes, I feel like it's gonna take five hours and then I make it take five hours. Mm. Like I'll go on my mm. phone for an hour and then do a little bit, and th but I'm just like, have a horrible and time And what you're saying tells. is that non-binary people can't get shit done, is that what you're saying? Well, no, what I'm getting to <laughs> is that I was trying to clean my room <laughs> and instead I ended up going on Ikea and Urban Outfitters and imagining how I would design my entire four bedroom apartment, which has the sort of gayness of interior decorating, but also the like straight hubris of like, and then I'll spend $10,000 on this and then 10, I don't have any of that money. So in that way, I think I kind of <laughs> bridged the gap between, <laughs> not, not gay and straight, but maybe some masculine and feminine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a problematic mm, yes. analogy, but. No. Um, <laughs> I mean, sure, but like everyone knows what you mean. But I stayed up all night and I, I cleaned maybe two things, but I have a 50 page Urban Outfitters furniture wish list, which also like a horrible decision that I'm going to Urban Outfitters to buy furniture. So, but sometimes they do have cool though, furniture. Sometimes they do have that one like cool thing. It's so overpriced. And it's, it's really, really overpriced. Yeah. Sorry yeah. that mine's not, this is not super emotionally vulnerable. But You're that like, what's overpriced? <laughs> yeah. What's the cost of bread? I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> like a hundred bucks for a loaf of bread or something. <laughs> <laughs> But I stayed up all night and I did that and then I cleaned my room. I'm really trying to, I follow a lot of like cozy aesthetic desk accounts 
Yeah, sure. Do you follow those? Yeah. I'm like very like, I'm like, as soon as I have money, I'm going to make my space so fucking cozy, cozy. dude. Yeah. It's going to be so fucking cozy. It's going to be all ambient lighting and fairy lights and little curtains. And I have a lot of little knickknacks. I collect a lot of little knickknacks. I used to be a big knickknack person. Were you really? Yeah. I, they're fun to get on now, the road. Now I'm like, <laughs> they are fun to get on the road. I went, <laughs> you said that like, I'm, they are fun to get on the road. Nice, Maddie. That sounds like a really great week. <laughs> All shapes Back and- Back to the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> so confident. <laughs> what kind of knickknacks do you get on the road, Maddie? <laughs> See, this is what I'm saying. I'm, I'm not fucking and sucking and licking and slurping, but look, I got some cool knickknacks and God damn it, I want to talk about them. <laughs> <laughs> so can I talk about no. my fucking goddamn yes, nickname? No, you can. You can Thank talk you. about your nickname. Thank you for using curses to drive home your point. I thought it was very effective. I, I think you guys are starting to think I'm a pussy. Okay, I'm not. No, a pussy. no one think. No one thinks I just that. Have some, no, no, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. You're no a whore one for nickname. No, the riff. <laughs> I'm, I'm still in the riff. You don't need to apologize. No one thinks you're a whore. I love that you're so neurotic. You are like pulling out of the riff. No, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. Why did you go to? Tell me about your knickknacks. <laughs> Come on, kiosk. I'll tell you about the, I'll tell you about the knickknacks. <laughs> I have a little I'm a shot. child coloring and you're a teacher trying to reach me. Tell me about the knickknacks. Okay, fine. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I, oh my I mean, God, I love teacher trying to reach you. <laughs> That's such a specific energy. I mean, I've been there. I'll come back when you're ready. <laughs> oh, your drawing looks really cool. <laughs> Do any of the knickknacks ever yell or argue? <laughs> <laughs> I did. Okay. I noticed that this knickknack often doesn't play with the other knickknacks. <laughs> it's in a corner by itself. That's interesting. <laughs> I, I do, I do, I do sometimes arrange them and I don't put one away from the others because I do think it'll make it sad. I feel bad doing that. No, sure. Yeah. Like I'm like, they got to have like little families and stuff. Yeah. No, like I'll also, I, this is how much I like put onto inanimate objects is that I'll save, I save every birthday card I've ever gotten because I, I can't throw I, it away. I used to have I that problem. That. Yeah. I also yeah. have that problem. I kept them. I put them all in a shoe box. It's just, you can't, it's, you, you know the, what I did? I took photos of them on my phone. Oh, that's a really good idea. And I put them in a little folder and then I was able, and the one or two that really meant something to me, I kept. That's a really mm. good idea. It just make, it makes me so sad to think of looking at, we're so proud of you, love you, and then trash, but throw we, it away. But they know that, yeah. they know. Unless it's like a super, I got a super heartfelt letter from a, from a, um, uh, fan in Madison. It was, it made me oh cry, Ma- made me fully cry. I mean, it was just like truly. This is what oh is legitimately God. powerful about what you do because when I do my comedy and I do <laughs> jokes about being a rich New York City kid, legitimately guys come up to me and they're like, bro, we have so much fucking money. It's, it's, it's crazy how much money I have. And you're the only guy talking about it. But there's a couple of us with a lot of money. You're one of them and I am You're the too. comedian for the wealthiest 1%. Yeah. It's the same 1% of people at all of your shows just jetting there, private yeah. jetting, private like, helicoptering to your shows. You're like, you're oh my God, Jeff Bezos again. outside the club. <laughs> I've gotten some good responses from weird girls with rabbits. The rabbit community has flocked wow. to my, for those who don't know, I have a special needs rabbit and he with chronic illness. <laughs> and I've had some responses. Wait, from he people. has special needs? Yeah, well, he. <laughs> <laughs> point it to me. They don't even know what we're talking about. I just oh, point yeah. at you. Yeah, yeah. You're like, that's rude. <laughs> Actually, inappropriate. My sister has special needs. So, yeah, we can. We don't have to talk about it, but I want to hear about your rabbit was diagnosed. My rabbit, have I talked about this in the podcast yet? No. Okay, this is probably more interesting than knickknacks. I was the knickknack story. Was I was riveted by the knickknacks. Yeah, I was. You too. were. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I do. I can share some of the knickknack stories, but the the rabbit story is that I have a rabbit who had syphilis and then MRSA, <laughs> and it took two years. What's MRSA? So yeah, so this is fucking crazy. MRSA is an antibiotic resistant strain of staph infection that was like tearing through hospitals and is like bad. <laughs> it's like like when people get it, they're like, this is bad and it kills people. And I don't know, I don't know how he fucking had it. I got him from a gas station in Wisconsin and then he had these scabs <laughs> in his mouth. He's been to three well, different vets in three different know, states. Oh, you got, got it, it. Yeah. yeah. No, I, did, I was like, they were probably selling him because they were like, eat him. But <laughs> it was like probably meat, but I adopted him. And and uh, 
And then he his I didn't mouth. Know you got him at a gas station in Wisconsin. That's the sweetest thing I've I ever heard. Yeah, he's a knickknack. It all connects. <laughs> well, you know what's really crazy? You know what's the cutest thing about Wilbur is his name's Wilbur. Is that uh, he? I, I I got him from this lady. I should have adopted, but I bought because I didn't know what I was doing. And I bought him from this lady who breeds show rabbits. She's been breeding show like they, they compete in little agility competitions and they it's like the Westminster dog show for rabbits. Yeah. And she couldn't use him because his ears were too long. So she was oh. selling him. And he has these long ears that like touch the floor when he walks. He has these long ears and he has syphilis. <laughs> <laughs> did she tell you about the syphilis? No, she did not tell me about the fucking syphilis. <laughs> then I texted her and she's like, I don't know what that is. And I was like, you fucking bitch. And so um, they didn't know what it was for a long time. I drove him to a bunch of different vets and and then eventually he <laughs> treated the syphilis. I had to give him penicillin, which I'm allergic to. And I started like having breakouts because I had to give him penicillin injections. Yeah. And I, but <laughs> sorry, this is so fucking, no. I just can't believe you guys were talking about sex and I'm talking about this. No, no, no. But, I think that's what, I think that's why you're here. Yeah. <laughs> There's something for everyone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the listeners hearing about sex when they really want to hear about rabbits with syphilis. When is this going to become rabbits with syphilis? <laughs> By minute 50? Okay, that's what I, I was hoping it would. <laughs> Finally, something relatable. <laughs> but it he is, is relatable. He it is. is. For people with syphilis. I'm destigmatizing the STD. Yeah, no, you are. But I just mean your your being is oh, very relatable. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I'm so sorry for everyone who relates. No, I, it's good. I'm happy with my little knickknack life. But <laughs> Wilbur Wilbur had to get a biopsy. They had, Do you know rabbits can get surgery? They had to yeah, give him a little course. anesthesia mask and he had to get surgery. I didn't know they could give him surgery. And they did a little biopsy sample and they sent it off to a lab. Yep. And they had to send in for a special medicine from the University of Georgia. For MRSA. For MRSA. Cause they were like, we cured the syphilis, but he had MRSA at the same time. And I've spent- How is it manifesting himself? Is he just like sneezing or- No, he had these big ugly sores all around his mouth and he couldn't eat. And I'd like feed him oh, through a little baby. syringe. Yeah. Also, I hate to bring this back to knickknacks, but a rabbit sized anesthesia mask <laughs> is actually a perfect knickknack. It's a great knickknack. Yeah. <laughs> you should ask the hospital if that's available for purchase. <laughs> to buy it. Are you throwing that away in the little bio waste thing? Yeah, can I actually have that please? <laughs> Can you give me the syringe as well? Thank you. Excuse me, that has MRSA and syphilis on it. That's fine, I'll take it. I want to play it in Monopoly though. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> but he's better now. He And I'm getting him a little lady friend. Ooh. Wonderful. Wow. Oh wait, okay, should I get him a gay, should I get him a gay lover? I think, I think, it, I think it's safe to assume. Yeah. Oh, I had a question. Please. Wait, wouldn't he spread the syphilis? Now he's good. Now he's uh, done. That wasn't. That wasn't. No, excellent producing, Alex. Yeah. I think that was really a, a moment to jump in. Absolutely. <laughs> Practically is, minded question. I'll tell you that. This is a real consideration. They say on the websites like rabbit info. Dot, dot edu. edu. <laughs> dot wiener. <Yeah. laughs> we I said on my website. <laughs> we, should, we should actually buy that domain. Rabbit info uh, dot wiener. <laughs> rabbit info dot wiener. <laughs> Alex, what, can we check it? Rabbit info. <laughs> <laughs> but they say, they say, you know, if you want the rabbit, pay, you to bond them as partners, it's like a whole process. And they're like, if you wanted to work well, you should do opposite sex, male, female, those bonds work no, better. No, sure, because they, but you've also got the complication of like territorial, they but say my, that. But some of them have to be gay. Sure, yeah. How do you know? You don't. I'm just saying, could I, <laughs> I'm just saying, but there are. <laughs> I'm just saying. I hate to be the straight dad of this. <laughs> this is, by the way, what parenting is. Some of them have to be gay. How do you know? You don't. <laughs> Eventually, you're going to have actual kids, and this is going to be a consideration as well. But I just want to. What if he's gay and I give him a lady friend? Um, I think then maybe they would go to brunch together. <laughs> <laughs> And they would have a really uh, good, yeah. you know, <laughs> candid friendship where they could have real, real girl talk. He would call her a slut way too much. <laughs> She's like, I hope you know that because you're gay, you can still sexualize me. And then that's like a really deep, you know, hard thing they have to go through in their friendship. <laughs> <laughs> If I find out that Wilbur's gay, I'm going to run some tests. What are you That's gonna what do? I'm going to report back next week on the podcast. I'm going to run some tests to find out if Wilbur's gay. You're going to put two plates of food out and one says gay food and one says straight food. <laughs> well, you could get two rabbits and just one male, one female and see who he I'll goes for. see who he for. goes for. Yeah. And then discard the other. <laughs> 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 and we don't mean give away. We mean do away with. 
<laughs> your eye went, yeah. you mean take care of it. <laughs> we have an issue with one of the rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> Wilbur oh. didn't want to fuck the lady rabbit. We'll <laughs> sacrifice a straight rabbit on the Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> we have a cauldron blood of straight rabbits. <laughs> no, that's how lesbians have sex. You learned. Mm. <laughs> well, that was wonderful. That was really good. Um, plugging our stuff. Seriously, guys. Well, you plug your stuff. What do you want to plug? I'm on the road. Butt I'm plugs. On, I'm on the road a fair amount. Uh, I'm coming to a lot of cities, though. I, I would say lukazelnik.com is a list of my tour dates and, and my cities. And you and, can sign up for your mailing list or your whatever Yeah, sign up. Tell me where to perform next. Those are the biggest things. I'm, I'm coming to your city, and I want to see you there. Yeah, and Lucas also opens for me, so come see me. <laughs> um, th- I felt really weird that you're here, and you're so good, and I'm like... And Lucas opens for me. <laughs> <laughs> I, do you know when this episode is coming out? Because I do have something to plug. But Just plug everything and then we'll see if it makes it. I'm Maddie Tweener on Instagram. Everything's in my link tree. Mailing list, YouTube channel, stand up, all that good stuff. A Substack essays that I'm writing. The works. Yeah, and uh, please, uh, you know, I'm really trying to, we're beefing up the Patreon. We have a bonus episode every single week, up to four, depending on what tier you're on, two if you're on a lower tier. There's live streaming of my podcast, of, of my weekly stand-up show, um, and we're live streaming variety show versions of this podcast live. Uh, we're doing that at the Bell House. This might be out after. But there's lots of cool stuff that gets you discounts and discounts on touring tickets. I'm really trying to beef up the Patreon right now because we're releasing that special, um, you know, later in in like probably April 2023. So uh, please, please, please. One dollar a month. It really, really helps. And I'd be so grateful. And uh, yeah. OK, we're done. Great. Oh, would, you like an, would you like an update on the rabbit info domain? <laughs> yes. <laughs> there is no rabbit info dot wiener. Woo! But you know, Oh wait, no, you mean it's not available? I, I don't yeah. think we can Who buy f- rabbit info dot wiener because oh. dot wiener doesn't feel like a domain. Yeah, it but there is rabbit info dot ooh, rabbit info <laughs> dot finance, rabbit <laughs> info dot <laughs> rabbit info <laughs> dot uh, <laughs> Rabbit info dot stocks. <laughs> rabbit info dot church. Uh, oh I mean, oh. Just about everything else, though. I think so. we're going to go with rabbit info dot finance, and yeah. I would like to purchase that website. <laughs> that should be your full time website. That would be so funny. Um, and I <laughs> hey, check me out at rabbit info <laughs> dot finance. <laughs> It's also an expensive one. It's yeah. 60 bucks a year. That's, Jesus Christ. Uh, that's fine. And we're just going to have a photo of you and Wilbur on there. <laughs> that is so funny. Please do that. And we're going to do it. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. That's funny. Listener, uh, first of all, patreon.com slash WHGS for bonus episodes, two to four of them a month. My comedy show live streamed and you can donate as little as a dollar a month and still get some stuff in return. It really, really helps if you've been putting it off, but you think, oh, I should do that. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. I'll wait. Do it. Okay, let's get into the the gay thought. Oh, and my tour dates. Uh, Text list. I'll text you when I'm coming. Small towns. I'm coming to Springsfield, Missouri. I'm coming to little towns in Vermont and big towns. Uh, Oklahoma City. Come on, guys. I'll text you. Some of these drop really fast. They sell out quick. Oklahoma City is more than half sold out, and I just announced it yesterday. So text list, and I'm dropping my special on there. The gay thought this week is that I had a tour date, and I brought my main main, and it was in an area mm -hmm, that, you know, being gay, not super common, very frowned upon. And I had forgotten that feeling of holding my hand in public with a girl and thinking, oh, man, people are going to draw attention to myself. And, you know, on this podcast, I don't know that I spend a lot of time shouting out the people that are doing that in the areas where it's not as common. But if you're being, if you are being gay in the middle of the USA, thank you for doing that. I know it's, it's hard. It's tough. Psychologically, it was a shift. I thought, oh, man, how are people going to react? We had to hitchhike a ride from one of the activities we did. And they asked us how we knew each other. And my main main, I hesitated. And my main main just said it before we got into the car. So we were risking not getting a ride. And we were in the middle of fucking nowhere. There were no taxis or Ubers or anything. Poor planning. Sounds like gay's about to get murdered in a movie. And first of all, I thought it was so cute and brave that she said it. 
But um, second of all, just if you're if you're feeling that, I felt it, and thank you for being you and supporting gay people by just existing in those places. I forgot how much that matters. So thank you. Have a good week, you piece of shit.